I've decided to create a pre-alpha version of RuneScape for the 1st of August. A little bit of a challenge, so I'll explain to you why I took this decision. And of course you'll see the progress I made this week. First of all, let me thank you for your support. On the comments, on the Discord and on Twitch. If you haven't yet, I recommend you to join the community on this call. So, as I said, I took the decision to create and publish a pre-alpha version for the 1st of August, which gave me two weeks to do it. That's a real challenge, but I think it's a good idea and I would recommend this to any game dev, so let me give you the reasons. The first reason is a motivational one. When you create a quite complex game, you need to focus on it for a month. Starting is easy, as you are over-motivated by your ID. But the more time you spend on it, the more obstacles you encounter, the harder it is to keep up this initial motivation. This is totally normal, but I think it causes a lot of game devs to stop their project. So deciding to publish a very rudimentary version of your game can really help you with that. It creates a milestone and acts as a tiny release. Finishing your game seems too far, but finishing this simple version is way more accessible. The second reason is because it helps to sort and select the most important tasks. It's easy to get lost because there are so many things to do when you create a game. Prioritizing is excellent, and when you need to publish your game in two weeks, you don't have the choice. You need to select and focus on the most important tasks, the ones which will really bring your game to life, in fact. Last but not least, if you decide to publish your version or even if you just send it to your friends, you'll get some precious feedback. Even in early stages, getting people playing your game and telling you what they will expect or not from it can help you to improve it a ton. I hope those advices will help you. If you want to add anything, you can do it in the comments. Now that you know why I took this decision, let's dive into my first week creating a pre-alpha version of RuneScape. During Monday morning, I solved four issues. Easy peasy. When the log cabin searched for a tree near the end of the chunks, it induced a crash of the server. I added a check, so I'm sure the point is not null, and that's it. I had a problem with the initialization of some trees, but I figured out it was not a problem. Easy solving. When two farmers were closing off to each other, one could end up being stuck in a field forever. Poor farmer. So I created a locking system, now they book the field before going to it. That's cool. I finished by a simple one. The terrain smoothing was not set up correctly when the game started. One line of code and voila, never been so smooth. During the afternoon, I enhanced the parallax background quite a lot. I'm very happy with the result. The trick here is to compute the distance to each background and by applying some perspective laws, you can easily compute the parallax scale and vertical sh BORING! No, I've put some random values everywhere. Offsetting, scaling, and offsetting again each background. That works fine. I'm just waiting on God of War so I can make those layers transparent in order to have a better color adjustment with the background. I spent my Tuesday morning designing the new game user interface and I spent the whole evening creating new menus for the game. I spent I don't know many hours making a smooth transitioning button using twin nodes cause freaking Godot is not able to freaking smooth button freaking transitions by its freaking self. Sorry, I love you Godot. So yeah, I made this button profitable and I've used it everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean absolutely everywhere. I also made a pretty cool button so you can delete one of your games. With a delete, of course, I don't want you to delete your preferred games by accident. On Wednesday, I was ready to start creating the game user interface. Uh, it was a lot of work as I wanted something completely different from what I did for the mockup. My idea is that when you hover or select a structure, you can see all the relative information at the bottom of the screen, which is quite unoccupied for the moment. The first step was to be able to see the structure name, and let me say, things didn't go well. I noticed the structure names were not corresponding to my mouse position, so I decided to add the point and chunk number 
so I can have a better understanding of what is happening. And I figured out when zooming in or out, the mouse position was not updated correctly. It made me wonder how it is possible that I didn't notice this earlier, cause when placing buildings I used the same formulas. Anyway, I multiplied I don't know what by the camera zoom value and of course it didn't fix the issue. It was even worse. I had to mess with some not cool formulas and I managed to get it working only on the leftmost point. So on Thursday morning I fixed it once for all. Now it works like a charm. Except it's all broken if the resolution is not 1920 per 1080. But shh. Then during Thursday and Friday I set up the rest of the game user interface. I like the result but also the way I made it. So let me explain it quickly. The structure user interface is made of different modules. The first one just shows the structure name and the point position. There is another one showing the inventory and a last one showing what you can build from the selected structure. Each module scans the selected point for a structure and gets the information it needs. For the name, it's quite easy. I can just call a function to get the structure ID. For the other modules, they should show up only if the selected structure have the corresponding module. Log cabins, farms and campfires have an inventory, so the inventory module should show up and access the current number of resources. The campfire also offers the possibility to build new structures, so the building menu should show up for the campfire. Those modules are represented as child nodes of each structure. So I can call get node or null with the module name to know if the structure has it. If so, I can just call the functions I need. I think it's a good example explaining how to use Godot or at least how you can use Godot with or without C sharp, by the way. Each child can be considered as a module which is easily accessible with get node. So here is how the game looks like with the new GUI. As you can see, I've also added a few buttons at the top of the screen. One is for showing some debug tools and the other one is for uh, saving the game and going back to the main menu. I finished this week by adding a blue cursor. I would like to bring different mouse cursors for when you inspect, build, and so on. I did some balancing too, so you have just enough resources to build your first necessary structures when you start a game. Next week, I want to finish the 1.0 pre-alpha version. I'll focus on the structure placement part, so you cannot build overlapping structures. I have a ton of things I want to add for this first version, so obviously I will have to select the most important ones. The choice will be rude. Again, thanks for the amazing support. Leave a like and comment for the algorithm. And join me on Discord and Twitch, I'll give the game for free to the more involved ones there. See you next week.